Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. So we've come to the point where we can start looking at how to control the LCD and what that entails. I'm going to do something a little bit different. If you watched the AVR series, you'll know that I explained how to control the LCD by using this little person inside the LCD and he sort of is the controller and he, he likes things certain in a certain way. In this case, I'd like to take a look at controlling the LCD by using the timing diagrams in a specific way. Usually you take a timing diagram just to look at specifications on when you, how much time you need or bring something high or bring something low before something else. And I think that's a good resource to use to figure out how to program the marking controller because you can take a look at a timing diagram and you can see when you need to enable, have the enable high, have the enable low, when to use the read write when to use the register select, and how to communicate through the data pins. So let's take a look at the timing diagrams and see how we can do this. Here are the timing diagrams that I'd like to look at first. And you have the, the LCD write operation. And you can see you have the, the enable, you have the read write, and you have the register select. And you can see that you have the actual high or low signal and you have the required timings between when that signal has to be high or low with respect to other signals. For example, the enable cannot be used until the read write goes low and that a certain amount of time has been passed before the enable is high. And the same thing with when the enable goes low, a certain amount of time has to pass before the read write can go high or before the register select can change its signal state. So let's take a look at these, these values. I'm gonna do something I think what I want to do is erase these symbols and I'm going to write the actual time required. So before we do a, an enable, the TAS, the RS or the RW, the read write or the read select, the register select or the read write must be changed before the enable. So let's take a look at the TAS symbol for the write operation. And most of these units are going to be in nanoseconds. And I think I want to write it in this way too, so I can write it as if it's code. So this is the position where the read write or the register select must be changed. The read write must be either on idle state, which is low, or it must have gotten from the high state to the idle state. The read, the register select must have actually gone from low to high or from high to low before the enable goes high from its normal state of low. So I'm going to put in a sort of a dimension between here and the TAS must be a minimum of 40 nanoseconds. Actually, I'm just going to... So this is 40 nanoseconds. Okay, so the, the TER, the symbol TER, is the enable rise and fall time. I'm not going to worry too much about this because we're just going to turn it on and code and I'm not worried about that. So the time, the read, write, and register select where the enable is on and then to where the enable is off, which is the, T, the PWEH. And the PWEH has a minimum of 230 nanoseconds. So let's put that in here. There doesn't seem to be anything between the 230 nanoseconds 
and where we have these new symbols, these two lines here. And since there's nothing there, I'm not going to worry about it. So, bef so now we know how long the enable has to be on. Actually, no, it, it is T there is a number here. It's TEF, which is, that's actually a maximum. The TER and the TEF, the TER and the TEF, these two here has to be a maximum of 20 nanoseconds. So we can't have it going from low to high more than 20 nanoseconds, but we really don't have any control of that. So I'm not going to worry about that. When our code decides to turn the go from a low to a high or from a high to a low, there's nothing we can really do about that in at least in terms of code, but in terms of the actual circuit, we might have some control over. Okay. So what I want to do is take a look at the next required timing, which is when we can change the data bits from a high or a low, or start writing the data to the data pins. And it looks like we just need to make sure that the enable is on when we start writing data to the data pins. So I'm going to erase this 239 seconds. I'm going to put a line right here. And I'm going to say, at these points, turn, let's see, yeah, turn on enable. Okay. And over here, I'm going to put read write low and change register select. So first we have to make sure that the read write is low. And then we have to also change the register select at the same time. And then we wait 40 nanoseconds and then we can turn on the enable. While the enable is on, we can start writing the data. It appears that the value here doesn't actually need to be set or we don't have to wait any specific time. We can just start immediately sending the, the byte to the, the data pins or the command. Well, it is gonna, it's going to be a byte, so yeah. The only requirement is that we have to wait a certain time after we start or after we output the byte that we can turn off the, the enable. So let's take a look. What is that DSW symbol? That is a minimum of 80 nanoseconds. So now we can turn off the enable after the 80 nanoseconds. After we've turned off the enable, we have to wait this long, the TH, before we can send any more information on the data pins, or before we can change the read write or the register select. Okay, so let's see what that TH is. Looks like TH and TAH are the same. Let's see what the differences are. TAH is 10 and the TH is 10. All right, so let's take this off. 10 nanoseconds. So this is 10 nanoseconds. So we know we have to wait 10 nanoseconds before we modify the data pins or we change the read write, which is going into the read mode, or, yeah, let me make that a little bit more explicit, or we change the, the register select. Actually, because the read write is always in write mode during the sequence, we shouldn't say change, we should say bring read write high. And then we have a final requirement here where we can't bring the enable high again to do another operation.
to start another cycle. And this could be either a read cycle or a write cycle because you'll have the read operation. You're also doing the same thing with the enable. You're bringing the enable high and then you're bringing the enable low again and you have the same symbol called TCYCE, enable cycle. And for both of those, it's 500 nanoseconds. So it has to be a minimum of 500 nanoseconds. So in this section here, we have approximately 130 nanoseconds of processes. So around here, you're going to want to wait probably around 400 nanoseconds minimum.